Hey guys, it's Ashley. Do you know what happened before the Christmas story? Stick with me to hear what I have to say. All right, guys, so a lot of us are familiar with the Christmas story. We're familiar that Mary had Jesus in a barn or a manger. Uh, we've heard about the wise men and the shepherds and all of that. And we're going to go deeper in that story in the weeks ahead. But what happens before all of those things? There's a story about Zacharias and Elizabeth. It's very important we know about these people because Mary gets pregnant by the Holy Spirit and she's got Jesus in her, in her tummy, right? But did you know that while Mary was pregnant with Jesus, she spent three months with Elizabeth, her cousin, who was also pregnant. And she was pregnant with John the Baptist. And so I have to include Zacharias and Elizabeth in the Christmas story. But we're going to rewind a little bit and just talk about how Elizabeth got pregnant in the story about just the manifestation of John the Baptist's birth and even the importance of John the Baptist. So in the book of Luke, we're going to want to start in the book of Luke with the Christmas story, chapter 1. We're going to jump to verse 5, and it's going to talk about how there was a priest, and his name was Zacharias, and it was his time to actually go and burn some incense. This was a big deal, and I think what's really cool about this story is if we were going to witness to someone with the faith of Judaism, so Judaism is a faith that um, some of the Jews have, and they don't believe that Jesus has come yet. They believe in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, and the Old Testament. They don't believe in the New Testament. However, the New Testament is a Jewish book. And if we brought them to this story, they would be familiar of of a priest, they would be familiar with burning incense because this is a part of the Mosaic law. So this is would be actually like a really cool place to bring them. Um, if you bring them to Matthew, you'll see the genealogy and they'll be familiar with the genealogy. They'll be familiar with Abraham and they'll see how Jesus came from that generation. That's another good nugget for witnessing to someone with the faith of Judaism because we want to be for the Jews. All right, back to the Christmas story. So Zacharias was going to go to the temple to burn some incense, a big deal. But an angel shows up and starts to talk to Zacharias. And this is actually the angel Gabriel, okay? So I'm jumping down to verse, let's do verse 11. Um, so it says, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, Zacharias, and uh, stood on the right side of the altar of the incense. And when Zacharias saw him, you know, Zacharias was troubled. But the angel says, don't fear. Like, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayers is heard. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you will call his name John. So the, see, this was a big deal because Elizabeth and John were older and Elizabeth was barren, meaning she, she did not have any kids. So they probably just assumed they weren't going to have kids because they were old. I don't know how old. I mean, 80, 90, something like that. Don't quote me on that. Um, but they were older. And so um, it goes on. The angel is prophesying about John. So mind you, this is John the Baptist. It's really important that we understand John the Baptist because he was the forerunner for Jesus. Scripture even says that like he is the one like making the path for Jesus. So it's a really big deal. And so for John the Baptist and Jesus, to be babies in the womb at the same time is huge. And mind you, John the Baptist was older than Jesus by, I think, five months. Don't quote me on it. But again, that would make sense because if John the Baptist paved the way and came before Jesus, him being a little older, I think, is very important and special and just significant. 
So the angel is prophesying about Elijah, I'm not Elijah, <laughs> about John the Baptist. Gabriel mentions how John the Baptist will be like Elijah. So if we go to verse 16, here are some of the prophecies that Gabriel is telling Zacharias. Um, he is saying that John the Baptist will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord, their God. Um, he will go before him, that would be Jesus, in the spirit and power of Elijah. Um, and there was other various things that, that Gabriel said. So this is a big deal. But guess what Zacharias says to the angel in verse 18? Zacharias says, how shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years. So we think as we read this, this was just a question, right? But there had to be something behind that question because Gabriel soon says, because of your unbelief, you will be mute. Meaning Zacharias could not talk. He could not talk all the way up to the birth of John the Baptist. And so this question, there was unbelief behind that question. And I also want to believe that there was even more than unbelief. I want to say the heart posture of Zacharias might not have been the greatest. That's just my own personal view. Never read that or anything. But I just find that so interesting. Because later on, Mary has a question, but she doesn't get mute. And I believe she did believe. <laughs> but I just find it so interesting that Zacharias asks this question and instantly he gets mute. It's because he had unbelief, but I also think the heart posture of him was not the greatest. So you read more about that in verses like 19 through 22 and how he was mute. Zacharias could not speak. So anyways, <clears throat> Elizabeth does, con um, does get pregnant and it says, oh my gosh, I love this. In verse 24, it says she hid herself for five months. And when I read that, I'm like, what does that mean? What did what, She hid herself. What did she do? I so believe she spent time with the Lord. I believe she just quieted her surroundings and just went deep with God. Went deep with the prophetic words about her baby because the old testament even talks about john the baptist and i bet you when zacharias wrote because now he's mute <laughs> guaranteed he wrote what he heard from gabriel to elizabeth she was probably like what i'm gonna bear john the baptist i mean he's talked about in isaiah and i don't know where else but that could be a good study but John the Baptist is prophesied in the Old Testament so when she hid herself I think she was in the secret place and if you don't know what the secret place is the secret place is just your intimacy with the Lord it's spending time with him it's prayer it's worship it's doing life with him I just love that I like see that verse it's verse 24 I'm like what did she do well, anyways, <clears throat> guess what happens? Gabriel's on a little mission, and now he's going to marry. So the same angel that we have probably heard about with Mary was talking to Zacharias. It's Gabriel. And now Gabriel is talking to Mary, okay? So verses 26 through 38 talk about Gabriel showing up to Mary, and you could go read those verses for more detail. But again, he says to her, don't be afraid. He says, there's been favor on you with God. And then he tells Mary, you're going to conceive and you're going to bring forth a son. So now Gabriel's also prophesying and he's prophesying about Jesus. And Gabriel says that, you know, God, Jesus, Jesus will be great. He will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will be um, the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Oh, my goodness. I mean, Mary is probably like, what? What? 
Same thing. I wonder if Mary was seasoned in the old, with the word of God. I mean, I have to believe that Mary at one time or more than once read about how there will be, you know, the Messiah being born from a virgin. And all of a sudden she's the one, like she's the one chosen. I mean, what? So of course she is probably taking all this in too. She is probably like, what? And so anyways, <clears throat> she responds with a question, just like Zacharias responds with a question. She says, how can this be? Because I don't know a man, meaning like she, she was a virgin. So it's like, how do I get, how do I have a baby if I'm a virgin? And so again, she's asking a question, but her attitude was right. Her attitude was simply a question. And Gabriel says, you know, no worry is like the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and the, and, and the power of the highest is going to overshadow you and pretty much you'll get pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And so <clears throat> Gabriel also says to Mary, hey, by the way, your cousin Elizabeth is pregnant. Oh my gosh. So crazy because now what's going to happen is Elizabeth is going to spend time with Mary. It sounds like Mary actually goes to Elizabeth. So, and it says even like quickly, it says like she made haste, which I look at it as she goes quickly. So as soon as she finds out she is gonna, you know, have baby Jesus in your tummy, she finds out that her cousin Elizabeth is pregnant. She like books it, right? And, and she shows up like on Elizabeth's doorstep. And they are going to spend three months together. I find it is astonishing that Elizabeth and Mary are both pregnant. Elizabeth is pregnant with John the Baptist. Mary is pregnant with Jesus. And they're going to spend three months together. How beautiful. How beautiful. Because think about it. Elizabeth can't talk to her husband because he is mute. And she's going to want to process all of this. They've got very prophetic babies in their tummies, guys. Very prophetic. And they get to process with one another. They get to share the prophetic words that they've heard with one another. And many other things happen during their time together. We'll learn more about that um, in the last part of Luke chapter 1. And we'll do that with another video. So just think about this story during the Christmas season. The Christmas story really starts with Zacharias and Elizabeth, as well as John the Baptist. All right, guys, God bless.